Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for coming back to another episode of EV Music. And in today's episode, we're gonna be actually making our own app, believe it or not. So if you love programming, this is gonna be an awesome tutorial for you. If you're new to programming, don't worry, I'm gonna try to teach you how to program your own iPhone app. So without further ado, let's explore the app we're gonna be making in this, I don't know how many part series, because this is just part one of the video, guys. So in part one of this video, we're gonna make the actual keyboard of this app that you see on the screen above. And th this keyboard is not going to make any sound yet in this tutorial, but we are gonna make the keyboard and we are gonna make it so that it fits on every iPhone. So to give you guys an idea of what we're gonna make overall in all of these tutorials, we're gonna make this whole app. And I have to give credit to Eric Ford, that's the guy who made this app, and he actually wrote an article on using a framework called AudioKit, which allows us to make apps like this. So go ahead, check out his article, and check out this app. It's called Jamulator. You can download it on the App Store, and I'll link both of those in the description. So make sure to check them out, but check out what you can do. <laughs> You can play the piano, you can choose from different voices. And on top of that, it also has a button which allows you to sequence and record the audio. So we'll be digging deeper into this in later tutorials. But for this first tutorial, I'm just going to show you guys how to make the keyboard. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing you guys are gonna wanna do before creating this app is you're gonna wanna go to your web browser and type developer.apple.com. And here you will be able to create a developer account which will allow you to make apps in Xcode. So you just click on account and if you already have an Apple ID, go ahead and sign in. If you don't, you do have the option to create your own, so you can do that as well. Now what you guys are going to do is you're going to click on the status bar of your Mac, the left hand Apple logo, and click on about this Mac. And you're going to go ahead and just make sure that you have the latest version of Mac OS X. It should say Mac OS Mojave. And if you don't have that, make sure that you update to the latest version because that's going to ensure that everything is going to work for us. After you finish those two things, go ahead, go to the bottom bar and open up the App Store and you're gonna go ahead and search for Xcode. And then once that pops up, it should show a get button. Mine shows an open button because I've already downloaded it. But you're just gonna go ahead and open it up and make sure it's version 10.1 before you download it. And then once you click the get button, it should start downloading and it will show it right there. It may take a while depending on your internet speed, but once the download bar is full, Go ahead and go to your search, your spotlight, and type in Xcode. And it should open right up, and then you can follow the installation process. Okay, so once Xcode is done installing, you're gonna wanna go ahead and reopen the app. So go ahead, reopen it, and you should see this nice welcome screen come up. If you don't see that, go ahead and make sure it's open. Go to the top window, and then welcome to Xcode. And that will get you this nice little window here. And then you're gonna create a new project. And then it's gonna be a single view app. And then you can type in whatever you wanna name your project. I'm just gonna name it Piano to be simple. And then you wanna make sure that that team is the developer account that you just created. And then organization name, you can leave that whatever you want. And then organization identifier, let's just do com whatever your name is to keep it simple. My name's Evan, so I'll just leave it at that. And then language, you wanna make sure it's Swift. And then all of these boxes here, doesn't matter if you leave them all checked, but make sure they're all checked. And then you can choose where you want your project to be saved. And after all of that, then we're gonna just double check some info here. So you wanna make sure where it says identity, that all of that info is what you just typed in. And then under signing, automatically managed signing should be checked. 
If not, you'll get errors, so make sure that's checked and then make sure that's your same developer account. And I believe for a new one, it will ask you to sign in or something like that. So just make sure you get that in there. And then down here where it says deployment info, make sure that portrait is unchecked because we only want our app to be in landscape. Okay guys, we're almost done with the boring part here. I know this stuff can be confusing and challenging for a new programmer or app developer, but I promise you guys, it's gonna get interesting towards the end of the video, and it's just stuff you gotta do if you're starting out making apps. So what you wanna do next is you wanna go to this website called audiokitpro.com. You wanna make sure you type it in as that, and you wanna make sure that it has this lock here, because usually that means you can trust the website, but still be cautious when you're downloading anything from the internet. And this website here directs you towards audiokit.io. So we know even though this isn't secure, we can still probably trust it, but still be cautious about what you download here. And then after you go to this website, you wanna click download audio kit. And what that's gonna go ahead and do is, oh wait, Hold on a second, you need to click the, it looks like you need to download this one, Audio Kit iOS 4.5.5. All right, so download that. Go ahead and wait for it to download. All right, it's very important that you guys do this now. So what we wanna do is go to the settings here, your system preferences. You should have this if you're on Mac. And then once you click on that, you wanna go to trackpad and you wanna to go to secondary click. You wanna make sure that's checked and check it as click in bottom right corner. Because then what you can do, you can do right clicks. And once you can do right clicks, then what you can do after you've downloaded that audio kit file is you can go to your downloads folder and it should look like this. I've downloaded it twice, so just ignore that one. But what you can do, it should look like this for you if you're downloading it for the first time. So what you can do now is right click it. That means click right on your trackpad, right corner. And then make sure you hover open with and then archive utility. And once you click on that, it's gonna open up archive utility and it should archive it as a folder in the same directory that you're in. So mine was actually this one, the original one. And then once you peek inside that folder, you'll see this readme.md. You don't need to worry about that because I'm just gonna simplify it for you by giving you a visual direction on how to do this. So you don't need to read that because I'm pretty much gonna show you what they tell you in there. So now that you got these two frameworks, you see they look like Lego blocks. Okay, now what you're gonna wanna do with those two Lego block looking thingies, the frameworks, you wanna right click on them, select copy two items, and then you're gonna go look for your project folder wherever you saved it, I don't know, but hopefully you just kept it simple and saved it on the desktop. But it should say your project name right on it, click on that folder, don't go any further, and just paste both items right there. And then once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to go to your project in Xcode. You're gonna to wanna to make sure this blue thingy is clicked, the project target. Make sure it's selected on general. Go ahead, scroll down to linked frameworks and libraries. And then go ahead, exit this out of full screen. Get your window ready. And it's just as simple as selecting these frameworks and dragging them right in there. And you'll notice, now you have your two frameworks. And they should appear like this, if there's nothing wrong with them. So make sure they're like that, all right? So after you've done that, there's one more boring thing to do, which I'm sorry about that, but you need to go to your build phases right here. Make sure your project target is still clicked. You're gonna go to your build phases. Actually, excuse me, you're gonna go to your build settings. So make sure you click on this one, not build phases. And then after you go to your build settings, you're just gonna scroll down 
all the way until you see this linking. You want to make sure you see that and then under other linker flags, click on that one, click this little arrow here that pops up and hover over debug. You should see an add sign. So you want to click that and then in here you want to type dash lc plus plus and you want to do the same thing for the release dash lc plus plus all right it's as simple as that you don't need to understand that part but now all the boring stuff is done and we can actually start building the app so let's get right into it all right so the first thing you guys want to do before you start coding real quick is you want to right click this folder right here that's under that blue thingy. Right click that folder, click new file, and then add a Swift file. And you'll see why we're gonna do this later. Now make sure that box right there is checked that has your project name on it. And this file, you can really call it whatever you want, but it's really helpful when you're programming that you call stuff what it's actually gonna do. Because if you just call it like pink unicorns or something, you're not gonna know what the heck that means. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this file screen control. And then go ahead, click the create button once you've named it. Now what you're gonna do is, or what I'm gonna do is delete all this gray text because I don't really need it for this tutorial. It doesn't actually affect the code. Those are just comments. They don't affect the code. So you can go ahead and delete those. Also, you don't need that foundation thingy, but whatever. It's kind of cool, but you don't need it. But what we do need is, you know how we downloaded those audio kit frameworks? Well, we need to import another framework. And why we import frameworks is so we don't have to build an app completely from scratch. Think about cars. Car companies, they don't have to build the whole car from scratch. They get parts and then they build the car. Frameworks allow us to do the same thing with our app. So the framework we want to import is called UI kit and literally to imp import a framework you just say import and then the framework name it's pretty simple nothing else kind of like English and so once you see that red text where it says import just like that you know you've done it right and all you need to do is import that import UI kit now the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna create something called a class and I'm not talking about the class you go to in school I'm talking about a thing in a program that holds code. This is gonna be the home for some of your code. And what a class does, think of it as like chapters in a book. You have a book, that's your Xcode project. The chapters are like classes. Those are where specific categories of code go. And this class, we're gonna call sc screen control because this class is gonna control our screen size. And make sure you have both of those brackets. Xcode should tell you automatically if you don't, but make sure you have both of those curly brackets, both one at the top and one at the end. And then in this code, we want to declare something called a variable, which is basically a value stored in a computer's memory. And that sounds confusing, but really just think of it as the health in a video game or the money in a video game. You have to store both of those values. Those are variables. In this specific variable, we're gonna call it a static variable. So we're gonna go ahead, type static. That means this variable exists forever, never goes away. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to say let. We're gonna tell this variable that it's going to be a let variable for now don't worry about what let means too much it just means within this class this variable can be used so this variable we can change its value so make sure you have that let in there that's going to be very important and then next thing we're going to do is name the variable you have to give things a name right you got to name your dog you got to do all that stuff so we're going to name this variable screen width ratio and the reason we need a ratio is because think about it if you have two triangles in math you got to use proportions to find the other missing side of the other triangle we're going to do the same thing 
All iPhones are similar. You need to build your app for all these iPhones. But since you know the screens are similar of all iPhones, you can use proportions to find the screen sizes. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And don't worry about this part, it's kind of confusing. Just type in exactly what I type in. You don't need to know this, but the way we get the screen size of the app is, or I mean of the device, is we type that. UIScreen.main.bounds.width. That's gonna get us the width of the screen that we're using. And we're gonna go ahead and divide that by 736. And the reason we're gonna do that is because that's a proportion. And it's specifically the size of an iPhone 6 screen because this app was really based around the iPhone 6. But we can use this proportion to help us with any other device. So just type in that proportion. Don't worry how I got the number, just trust me. And then the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but guess what we're gonna do it for? What screen element are we gonna do it for? We're gonna do it for, you guessed it, the screen height. Or maybe you didn't guess it, I don't know. Maybe you're just confused at this point. To be honest, I'm throwing so much information at you, but just type the same thing, except you wanna make sure you call this one screen height ratio. And then go ahead, uiscreen.main.bounds.height. That's the one different thing. And this, nope, it's not 736. You're gonna divide it, slash means divide, by 414. And there you go, there's your second proportion. It's quite nice. Now, what we're gonna do now is create a function. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I hope you do a lot of functions in your daily life. I hope you go to the bathroom every day. I hope you brush your teeth every day. I hope you sleep every day, because if you don't, that's gonna be very bad for your health. But also, we all do daily functions. We all have to do something in life. It's the same thing in a program. You gotta do stuff. You gotta have functions. So we're gonna call this function a static function. Static funk. I know, it's kinda weird. It's like funk. It's funky. But yeah, we're gonna call it static funk. And you can name this function whatever you want, but again, when you're making a program, it's really useful to name things what they do because then you don't get confused. So we're gonna name this one manage screen size or manage size and don't worry about all this stuff i'm typing i'm just assigning types to a bunch of stuff so i'm gonna call this thing rectangle and the next part we're gonna do cg rectangle that's how you get a rectangle size in the iphone you know iphones are shaped like rectangles so it makes complete sense and then i'm gonna do an arrow thingy dash and then that that um what's it the the greater than or less than sign do that and then also do cg rectangle another one all right so you want to make sure your code looks exactly like mine right now and make sure you have those brackets and oh look we got our first error that's what an error looks like we're missing a return value because i'd hope when you're sleeping your body should tell you how much sleep you got and that's when your body is returning the quality of your sleep to you after you've performed your sleep function. So what you need to do for every function, or except voids, which don't require a return value, you need to return something. So just type in what I type in, return cgrect x of type rectangle, the thing we just created up there, dot origin dot x, the position, the middle position of the screen. Think of the origin as that. And then we're gonna times that by our proportion screen dot screen width ratio that's our variable that we just created in the top and then the y we're going to do rect dot origin dot y and what are we going to do now you guessed it the screen height so we're going to multiply it by that proportion that we just defined above remember that variable and then next thing we're going to do instead of x we're going to type colon and we're gonna type width. We're gonna type width colon. And what's this? Rect dot width. So pretty similar to what we did last, but just a little bit different. Oh, whoops, I think I missed a dot there. So you gotta be careful when you're programming because you can miss a lot of stuff if you don't look carefully. And then that rect dot width, we're gonna multiply that by our 
variable, you guessed it, the screen width ratio. And then we're going to do the same for the height and guess this one. If you guys can't guess this, you haven't been paying attention. It's our screen height ratio. And now notice how everything just turned green. We don't have any errors. We don't have nothing. We can compile this and run it as an app, although it's not finished yet. But just so you guys can see what an error is, I'm going to create one. And just by deleting that, we should get an error. Yep, it just turned red. That means no go. You can't build your app now. So now what you got to do is fix the error. And I encourage you guys, if you get an error, please leave it in the comment section below. Because I can't help you fix that error unless you tell me what that error is. So please leave your errors in the comment section below if you get any. But if your code looks exactly like mine does right now, you shouldn't get any errors. Wait, hold up guys. Sorry for the bad quality video, but I'm editing this thing right now. And actually, I wanted to tell you guys that you might get an error. And you should get an error if you're watching this video like five years later. Because what's probably happened is Apple has probably updated Xcode and they've probably updated Swift. So the syntax of the language, you know, the English language changes over time. So just like the English language becomes more modern, we use words like different slangs and all that. Programming languages, they also change. So something you typed in this video might have a different syntax. It might be said differently nowadays. So if you have an error at this point, please leave it in the comments section below and I will try to help you the best I can. So congratulations, you just created a class that can control your screen size and make your app not look crappy on other devices. So now it can run on every device. Good job, you're a genius. If you made it this far in the video, kudos to you because I know this is confusing stuff. But now look at it. Look at all these devices you can run your app on. Don't run it on the iPads yet. I will cover that later. Check this out, guys. It's currently a blizzard and school just got canceled tomorrow. Yippee! Okay, sorry about that, guys. I had to take a quick break. I've been coding for so long and now it's actually the next day. So I had to take a quick break from that, but now I'm back at it. I encourage you guys to take breaks too. It's very important for your eyes. But anyway, good news. We're done adding files to our project. Now we just need to code some more stuff. But this coding is gonna be a little bit interesting for you guys because you're gonna actually see how the visual elements of the app come into play. And you're gonna see that through a file called the viewcontroller.swift. You can see right where my mouse is pointed. And you should have one just like that in your project folder. So what I want you to do is go ahead and click on that file. Okay, so once you've opened the file, you should see it look similar to how mine does. And you should see the import UI kit and then our view controller class. Those are very important things, so make sure you have those. And then you can go ahead and delete the gray text up there. Like I said before, that's comments. And I can actually make a comment and I'll make a couple comments just to guide you guys through this. But anyways, you're gonna import both audio kit and audio kit UI in this piece of code. So make sure you have those up top there. And then this class view controller, I'm gonna make a comment that helps you guys better understand what it is. This view controller class is what you view the app through. A view controller, you might be going, what the heck is a view controller? Well, a view controller is the window through which the user views the app elements. Without it, the screen would appear just black. So you wanna make sure that you understand that. It's okay if you don't at first, but just think of it. Think of the windows you look outside with you in your house, you know? They're the same thing. They allow you to see the outside world. This allows you to see the app. And then this function right here loads the view controller window. It sets it up. You can see below the comment I made, there's also an, another comment that says, do additional setup after loading the view. So this is where you're gonna set up your view controller. You want all that code in here. And we're gonna create a new, we're gonna call a new function. And how you do that is you do what I just did. This function is gonna be called load keyboard. 
you can really name it whatever you want, but just make sure you have those closing parentheses there after the function name. And we're gonna go ahead and see if this compiles actually. Oh, it looks like we used uh, unresolved identifier. What's that? I don't get it. I don't get it guys, I think I'm stuck here. Oh wait, we have to call the fun, we have to define the function before we call it. Okay, yeah, you guys can maybe tell I made that error on purpose just to show you guys. You have to define a function before you call it. So make sure you define that function. Again, you can name it whatever you want, but just make sure that you define it before you call it. And then you can see it turns green up above. So I'm just gonna make that comment there so you guys remember. And then inside this function load keyboard, we're going to set a new variable, which is the piano keyboard that's actually gonna appear on the screen. This is the exciting part, guys. So you can see without this variable, we can run our code, but the screen is just gonna be white and it's not gonna show anything. Pretty boring app, right? You can't do anything. So in order to make that keyboard appear on screen, we need to define a new variable. And this variable is gonna be our keyboard view, the actual keyboard that appears on screen. So we can declare that variable by saying let and then our variable name, in this case, I'm gonna name it keyboard view, equals AK keyboard view, and that's part of our audio kit framework, so make sure you got that framework in there, or else it won't turn green. And then you can say frame, and then we want to define the behavior of our window, right, our view. So we're gonna do that by calling our screen control class that we created earlier. Remember all that code there, that file we had to create? Yep, we're gonna call all of that code and that's gonna define how our view behaves, which is gonna behave to fit all of the iPhone screens. And then in order to fit it and run that function that we created earlier, we also have to do dot manage size to reference to that function, which fits our view to each screen size on each device. So you wanna make sure you got that function in there as well that you created earlier. And then we can do rectangle, and you guessed it, CG rectangle, because iPhones come in rectangles, right? Pretty simple enough, don't worry about it too much. And then now we're just defining the position of our keyboard view. So X0, Y200, and then width, we're gonna do 800, that's the width of our keyboard, and then height is going to be 250. And remember, these, these appear differently on every device. And then finally after that, we need to add our keyboard view to the view controller for it to appear. And we do this by doing self.view.addSubView and then the variable we just created in parentheses, keyboard view. And now guys, we should be able to run this. So I'm gonna give you a little spoiler alert here. This app isn't going to work right now. So you don't need to compile it, but I just wanted to show you how careful you need to be when you're programming because watch this, I'm gonna try to run the app right here. It's gonna install, everything's going just fine. I'm not getting any errors, but the app screen is white and there's still no keyboard. Why is that? Well, let's go ahead, check some of the files, see if we maybe just type something wrong. Okay, so to fix this error, I'm pretty sure it's in that screen control file that we just created. And we should just look in this file and see if there's anything wrong with it. So go into your screen control .swift and just look around, see if you notice anything that seems out of the ordinary. Well, okay, we see the rectangle width here. We see that we just made that, but the height, it doesn't have that rect dot height. That's what we're missing, guys. I think that's what we need to do. We are missing something. So we need to do rect dot height and then times screen height ratio. So now you guys should be able to actually compile your code. So go ahead, go to the top bar right there, make sure iPhone 6 is selected, hit play, and then you can go ahead and try and run your app. Now, your device might take longer to load than mine. It should load up pretty slow for the first time, but then you should be able to open this app and you can now go to hardware and rotate the device. 
just like I'm doing right now. And then it should be in the correct orientation. So congratulations, guys. We just made a keyboard. I mean, it doesn't make any sound yet, but that's hopefully what we're gonna get to in part two. So I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this tutorial. And you can go ahead and try building this on other devices, and it should work just fine. Um, but don't try building it on the iPads because we need to do some work in our screen control class in order to get that working on the iPads, or else it might just you might notice that it the keyboard just shows up really weird. But now that we made this screen control class, we can make it show up decent on every iPhone, including the iPhone X's. So I want you to try that. Try running it on every device. You can even run it on your own device if you plug your device in. Um, I'll show you guys how to do all that in the next tutorial, but for now, this one's been kind of long. Sorry about that. I tried to make it as short as possible. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely leave a like if you liked it. If you didn't, like it just let me know what i can do to improve these videos and um, remember to check out the article i mentioned in the beginning of the video without it i wouldn't have figured out that this app could exist and i wouldn't have figured out how to use the audio kit framework so make sure to check out eric ford great guy great article and for now i'll see you guys in the next video